Hi, welcome to Green TV, the show dedicated to Green New Deal positive solutions. The Independent Green Party of Virginia advocates for solar jobs, wind jobs, geothermal jobs, rail jobs, weatherization jobs, and conservation jobs. Today we have with us Kate Alexandrova, and uh, today on the hot seat we have Carrie Campbell. <laughs> oh, hot seat? Yes. Oh, good. Taste your own medicine. <laughs> right. There we go. Great. Uh, Mr. Kerry Campbell is a candidate for Braddock Supervisor, and uh, we're going to uh, talk with him about his positive solutions for Braddock District in Fairfax County. Thank you so much uh, for having me, Gail Ferrell Parker, Kate Alexandrova, and uh, your director, Kerry Rafter, an audio person in the control room, Happy Garcia. Uh, it is an honor and a pleasure uh, to be here with you all today, and I am indeed a candidate for Braddock District Supervisor, uh, Fairfax County Board of Supervisors. Uh, the key reason uh, that uh, I want to run in oh, the election, by the way, is November 3rd, uh, 2015. November 3rd, 2015, first Tuesday in November. The reason I want to run is uh, we need to improve uh, our transportation. We need more trains and less traffic. We need more trains and less traffic Kate, because rail saves lives. 30,000 Americans are killed every year on our highways. Some years it's more. Uh, 330,000 Americans are injured every year uh, on our highways. Rail save li saves lives. And of course, the other big reason that I'm running for Braddock District Board of Supervisors uh, is to grow the economy, and rail grows the economy. Um, Rail jobs, uh, rail creates $20 for every dollar that we uh, invest. Uh, rail is the positive solution. Now in Braddock District, uh, uh, the district that is in the heart of Fairfax County, uh, we have the Virginia Rail Express with three uh, stations, Rolling Road, uh, Bradlick, uh, Backlick Road Station, and of course Burke, uh, Burke Lake. Uh, Burke Station. Uh, we need dedicated passenger, Virginia Rail passenger track uh, for uh, Fairfax County and for Braddock District. There are some inexpensive solutions there in Braddock District, rail solutions uh, that we need. Electronic signs at the major thoroughfares by every Virginia Rail Express stop. You know, we have gone, my wife and I, and other independent Greens have gone door to door to all 44,000 households in Braddock District. And it just is amazing to me that people who live right by uh, the Virginia Rail Express stops don't realize that there's a passenger rail station there. And sadly, it's, uh, I believe, by design. But the positive solution is to build these electronic signs where when people are coming by, they can see that there's a train there and that there's a and that they could take the train uh, and, and get into the district. Um, North Springfield, where I live and have served on the North Springfield Civic Association Board, uh, is right, right there, right by the Backlick uh, Virginia Rail Ex Express Station. It only takes 12 minutes from North Springfield to get to Old Town Alexandria on the Virginia Rail Express. Clean rail cars, double-deckers, comfortable, use your cell phone, use your computer. Uh, rail is uh, the healthy uh, way to go. Um, other reasons that I am running for Braddock District Supervisor, uh, we need a pedestrian friendly, a Braddock District and a pedestrian friendly Fairfax County. That means uh, more walkways, more sidewalks, uh, because it's healthy and because it grows the economy. We're seeing that the millennials uh, are moving into the smarter growth areas. And it simply gives us a bigger bang for the buck. Arlington County is the successful smart growth model, whether it's in Virginia or even nationwide, where they have those uh, smart growth, five metro rail stops. Uh, that's where they grow revenue and keep their tax rates low. So Arlington, uh, compared to Fairfax County, pays a lower tax rate, 
and receives more services. Now say that again, they pay a lower tax rate and they receive more services? And that's because of rail. And what rail does when we build rail and why we need to build more of it in Braddock District in Fairfax County uh, is rail increases the value of our homes, our businesses, and our communities. And in turn, that grows revenue for our schools, for our fire departments, for our police departments, and for our vital human services in the county, like a Meals on Wheels for the elderly folks that uh, are served at home. These are just uh, some of the positive uh, benefits of rail. And uh, I mentioned the need to, do, to grow uh, pedestrian ways, and we need to bring bike share to Braddock District and across uh, Fairfax County. The District of Columbia has bike share, Arlington has bike share, Alexandria has bike share. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is really uh, the wave of the future and the way that uh, Braddock District uh, needs to go. There are so many uh, places in Braddock District where we can and should put bike share. We could put it at George Mason University uh, in Fairfax City, at Northern Virginia Community College, at Annandale. Uh, we could and should put it uh, also uh, bike share at each of the Virginia rail stops, also over into Springfield, at the schools, the high schools, Annandale High School, uh, Braddock High School, Braddock Lake High School, uh, Woodson High School. Um, we should put bike share there so that we alleviate the parking problems. We have parking problems at those schools where uh, the young folks, they drive, and, and some of those have had to be zoned no parking because there's uh, no place to park. The positive solution is to increase people's ability to walk, increase people's ability to bike. Uh, you know that uh, 30 percent of uh, all trips in Fairfax County are under three miles. That's an opportunity to walk mm -hmm. for your health or an opportunity to bike. And we need to see more county resources put into rail, into pedestrian, uh, into bikes. So those are just some of the positive solutions and some of the reasons why I'm running for Braddock District Supervisor in Fairfax County. You Thank mentioned you. schools and speaking of uh, those, uh, what do you think should be done in the district in, as far as uh, education goes? Well, the uh, important thing for that a member of the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors does when it comes to schools, the first and most important thing is voting on the budget. And about 52%, over half, of the Fairfax County budget goes to schools. And to that extent, the supervisor uh, has a key role in staying involved in the community, making sure what the uh, community consensus is, what everybody agrees to, and then voting the appropriate budget uh, for the Fairfax County school system. And of course, as so many know, Fairfax County uh, has one of the nation's premier schools with about 90% of all of the high school graduates in Fairfax County going on uh, to some form of higher education. Oh, that is impressive. That is the impressive number. Mm -hmm. Whether it's technical training, whether it's community college, or uh, whether it's uh, other colleges. So uh, education, Fairfax County taxpayers uh, walk it like they talk it, and of course uh, most uh, of the county revenue comes from the value of our homes, the property taxes that we pay on our homes. Again, let me tie that to rail. That's why it's so crucial for us to improve rail transportation to save the lives, to protect the lives of uh, folks, and to, and to build the rail that will increase the value of our homes, our businesses, and increase revenue for the schools, the police, the You know, I just love it that I asked you about education. Honestly, I was thinking you're going to start talking about the curriculum, the importance of, uh, um, you know, teaching kids how to go green and everything. Instead, you just took the budget route, and that is, I take, because of your background. Well, that's right. I, so I tell guess us I, a little bit about that. Well, I was like, he is such an accountant. Yeah, I am an accountant. I, I, it's true. Um, I'm standing beside a budget analyst, as you know as well, so the independent uh, Greens are, are known for our numbers. Um, what qualifies me, really, is what you're saying to be a, a Braddock District Board of Supervisors. Well, here's the resume. Uh, 
an accountant for 24 years. I've worked as an accountant for 24, it might be 26 now. Um, and before that, I was a, a broadcast journalist and uh, worked in television news for a long time. Uh, for Bra uh, Braddock District Board of Supervisors to run for that office requires other bona fides. And I, I have served on the North Springfield Civic Association uh, board and been a proud North Springfield Civic Association member since, uh, um, I guess, it, probably the late 80s. Uh, I uh, served with Gail Farrell Parker on the Fairfax uh, Federation of Civics Associations with, with Gail. I was elected vice president of the uh, Fairfax County Federation of Civics Associations. Uh, Gail Farrell Parker and I, uh, who was the Montebello representative to the Fairfax Federation of Civics Associations, have sat in many budget and transportation meetings until one o'clock in the morning and then get up and go to work the next morning. Uh, Dr. Dale, you are, uh, Dr. Dale, who is Fairfax County's, one of its uh, esteemed citizens and great uh, authorities on education that you were talking about, is a great advocate for the education uh, budget each year and so we would often be there late into the night working on that. Uh, I have served as well on the Braddock District Transportation Comprehensive Transportation Council um, on the, at the elected North Springfield representative to uh, the Braddock District Council and on various uh, budget committees served as chairman, uh, transportation committees. Uh, those, are the, uh, those are the things. So basically um, almost uh, uh, three decades of work in the community uh, for Braddock District and for Fairfax County uh, into all of these issues that uh, makes me very familiar well, with See, the, the reason I asked you about schools is that, uh, to me, it seems um, really hard to change uh, people's learned behaviors, such as, say, driving a car is an American way of living. Oh, I disagree with that. I absolutely disagree with it. It's just, it's propaganda by that industry. Um, I have Yes, I, I agree with you. I'm not saying it's not propaganda. Uh, yeah, it, it's a successful propaganda. Well, I, I don't even agree with that. I you, don't buy You see it. cars everywhere. Are you, you well, and, and, see what I'm trying to ask you is that how are you going to make people think that dry, uh, that, w see, that walking and biking instead of driving is cool because that's what young people want. They want to be cool. How do you do that? Well, they all, because you got to change mm -hmm. the future. Yeah. The facts are uh, the, the demographics already, the data supports that. Yeah, uh, the millennials are all moving into yeah. walkable, yeah. Uh, pedestrian friendly communities, uh, or just go take a walk in Clarendon, or just go take a walk on H Street, okay. or just go take a walk in Shirlington, yeah. or uh, right just go rail. take a right here in Merrifield, where I had lunch t uh, today. Uh, all of these thriving communities, Reston, these are walkable, pedestrian friendly communities whose value is appreciating. So it is good common sense. It makes sense for the budget. But let me give you a cold hard fact. 60% of the people in Washington DC get to work by walking, biking, or using rail or transit. 60%. So 60%. 61 is the actual number. I rounded it down 1%. Um, and that's according to the Washington Post this week. Uh, rail ridership in the United States is higher than it has ever been in the history of the nation. And let's bring, as I'm running for Braddock District Supervisor, let's bring this back to Braddock District. The Independent Green Party began advocating for more trains and less traffic three decades ago, pushing for this issue. And now, we have lovely, nice, clean Virginia Rail Express trains that run with more frequency than they used to. And they used to not be nice. Uh, they used to be single and very old, and that has constantly improved it. And actually, this is where I'd love to make a pitch for anybody who's watching. 2015 is gonna be a very big, busy year for uh, elections in Virginia. If you're watching, in the sound of my voice, please, 100 seats for the House of Delegates will be on the ballot. Now, just two years ago, we saw that 60% of the seats for House of Delegates were unopposed. It's our tax dollars. We can 
make a positive difference by getting on the ballot and advocating for a positive solution, like more trains, less traffic, more candidates, less apathy, and fiscally responsible, fiscally conservative solutions. And Rio is vastly more fiscally conservative and fiscally responsible. It, yes, Gail. Yes, um, well, Carrie Campbell, uh, speaking of the schools, um, do you have a positive solution for reducing the utility bills for the schools so that they, more of that money, that 52 percent of the county's budget can be applied to education rather than to um, utilities and support? How would, what's your positive solution for that? Thanks, Gail. Gail for real. Uh, solar jobs, solar jobs, geothermal jobs, efficiency jobs, conservation jobs. Uh, in the latest 2015 federal budget, the Congress just in, in the omnibus, they passed a measure that is just when we could be using much more efficient uh, light bulbs, modern light bulbs that use one-tenth the energy cost. Certainly we should move to green uh, in all sorts of ways in all the schools and all the county buildings, whether it's a, a LED building or, but you know, I walk it like I talk it. Uh, my house has 51 solar panels. It has geothermal heating and cooling in North Springfield. Uh, it produces more energy than it consumes. Now we can and we should, as frugal taxpayers, want to see our county buildings and our schools do the very same thing, and they can. And that means installing, uh, that means taking it out of the capital uh, budget and installing geothermal in all those buildings and solar panels on all the roofs. Now, that is cheaper now to do than it has ever been before. And if you, like me, in 2015, on November 3rd to Braddock District Supervisor, uh, the first measures that I would propose to the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors would be these, rail and solar uh, geothermal installation in all of our uh, public buildings. Uh, this isn't pie in the sky. The Washington Redskins have done it. Uh, the Seattle Super uh, Seattle uh, Seahawks, the football team, uh, has done it. I'm an Air Force veteran, uh, and so I take note of the fact that Hickam Air Force Base in uh, Hawaii, uh, the Air Force Academy in Colorado, Air Force bases around the world have installed solar. Uh, and we can do that. We should do that in all of our public buildings in Fairfax County and as a uh, candidate for Braddock District Board of, uh, Board of Supervisors, uh, I advocate for that. So we've covered rail, we've covered solar, we've, we've covered geothermal. I think we've got to most of my resume. Did uh, I leave anything out? Um, not that I could not, Your not favorite that. question. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your family. All of because that, we that, all that, want to know where you're that, coming where from, you come what from, you stand that is for family. as a, you that's know, right. that's where did, where did you, where were you born, where did you grow up? I, I think that is important, you know, when, when you open up that people know that about you. Um, you know, I always describe myself as a uh, Kentucky, Kentucky trailer park hillbilly. And that is to say all of my family are Kentucky Campbells. Who, uh, the Campbells first went into Kentucky with Daniel Boone and the late 1700s, uh, and uh, that's very much a, a part of, uh, of who I am and who I see myself as. Any coal miners in the family? You know, my, uh, my grandpa, Kelly Campbell, always taught us to never go to work in the coal mines. And he would not, my father was his firstborn son, and he would not allow my father to do that. And he had learned that from, Grandpa Kelly had learned that from Grandpa Brack, and he had learned that from uh, Grandpa Zachariah, Jr. Um, and he always said, uh, very simply, working in a coal mine will kill you. And uh, so they taught us to uh, uh, go and learn another business uh, and, uh, and to study uh, education. Uh, so that is, uh, of course, when you talk about coal in uh, 2014, you realize that that is an industry that really doesn't uh, need people anymore.
we have more people working in solar uh, in Virginia, 11,000 And now, solar and does cool. not kill. Solar doesn't. <laughs> solar, solar makes money. I make, make money with it. Uh, on to uh, uh, education. I, I was in the Air Force, and I thank the Air Force every day for the education that it provided to me while I was in the Air Force as an enlisted man. I went to school on the weekends and at nights. I spent most of my time in the Air Force in Europe uh, working for uh, Denny McKellum and Bob Woodby for American Forces uh, Network and uh, radio. Uh, and uh, that's where I came across the Green Party and Patrick Kelly, the founder of the Green Party in the 1970s, probably before you were born, Kate. And, uh, True that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm circa 1980. <laughs> All right. And uh, uh, so the, the, that's... Uh, What's so, so funny about it anyway? So, 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 exactly right. Exactly right. And so uh, that's my education. And uh, uh, then I went to the University of Kentucky, as any Kentucky boy would, uh, to study accounting and business. Uh, and this, my... Uh, Fascination. You know, we're numbers. missing on a very, very important part. Yes. You said you came across the Green Party. Mm. How did it happen? Why did it uh, catch your attention? Why did you want to join? Mm. There had to be some story to it. Mm -hmm. Gail yeah. for real Parker knows the story very well. Uh, the Green Party was founded by a, a woman who really actually looked much like you, Patrick Kelly. Kate, she was about your height um, and just a tremendous intelligence, uh, leadership, and charisma that Patrick Kelly had. And so when I met her, um, that was very inspiring to see uh, someone with so many great ideas. How did you meet her anyway? Well, it was because uh, I sought her out uh, for broadcasting, and we covered, mm -hmm. uh, we covered uh, the Green Party's beginning. And when the Green Party started in the 1970s, it was politically a uh, very exciting time. Uh, and as a Southern Baptist, as my raising, uh, the Green Party uh, teachings of nonviolence, and Patrick Kelly often cited uh, Jesus and Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr. as inspirations for the idea for the Green Party. And I, I think these things are uh, something that uh, con nonviolent conflict resolution is something we need to uh, keep in front of us and teach in our schools and in our society. And so I think that's where uh, the Green Party has an enormous amount uh, to offer. The Green Party, the thing that I found attracting, when attractive about Patrick Kelly starting the Green Party was she always said it's, it's not left, it's not right, but it's out in front, showing the way. It's in the leadership to uh, the positive solutions uh, for the future, what we must do and what we must do today to preserve our, our republic, our democracy, uh, our communities uh, for the future. You're watching Green TV with uh, Kate Alexandrova, Carrie Campbell, and I'm Gail Farrell Parker. Uh, and we're interviewing Carrie Campbell, who is a candidate for Braddock District Supervisor in Fairfax County. And he is telling us about his positive solutions for Braddock District. One, um, one issue that's on uh, a lot of um, people's minds these days, uh, privacy, uh, cameras and drones. And do you see that there's any um, uh, positive solution or do you have a position on privacy uh, in Fairfax County uh, that you would like to share with us today? Well, that, that, that is a question that is new certainly now with the drones and I just uh, read an article about the dangers that it presents uh, for flying, right, and some of the accidents. Um, that uh, could occur. Now, as uh, uh, a candidate for Braddock District Board of Supervisor, uh, I could tell you this, I, I, don't, I, would, I don't see myself supporting a measure on the County Board of Supervisor for uh, any county drones to monitor uh, any sort of activity. Uh, and I would look very carefully and cautiously 
and conservative. Drone people. defense for Braddock County. No drones. And, you know, there's missile defense. <laughs> there's going to be okay. drone defense. Okay, all right. Well, um, I, I, I think that you could, you could foresee uh, new possibilities for, for drones in the private industry. Of course, <clears throat> UPS has talked about delivering packages mm -hmm. and such. Um, these are things that would rightly, I believe, fall under the purview of uh, the Transportation Planning Committee and the Fairfax uh, County Board of Supervisors if it came to a local level. Of course, the first the feds and then the state are going to have to deal with this. And as, as you well know, Gail, uh, under Virginia law, the Dillon Rule, uh, is the local government only has the power that is expressly given to it um, by under Virginia's state law by the state uh, legislature. But you got into another area of um, privacy and where cameras are used and, um, and then it really does become, as you uh, alluded to, Kate, a question of uh, security or protection. And th there has been proven value with no doubt, uh, for use um, uh, of these cameras. And, you know, we have a, a case ongoing right now in Fairfax County where a gentleman uh, by the Fairfax County Police was shot and killed uh, in his home. And a few people have talked to me about that as I've gone door to door and been out in the community. And it's gotten some, some press in the Washington Post and, of course, our hearts go out to the family and, and friends uh, and the community. Uh, it is an absolute shock and a, and a tragic thing that would, would occur. Um, I would say as an elected member of the Braddock District Board of Supervisors uh, that certainly we want more transparency than we have seen on this issue uh, by the board in that case. Um, on the other privacy aspect, um, where in government buildings, where in public places uh, should people be videotaped? This is going to be an on, ongoing issue, Gail, uh, Kate, and I think that each case has to be judged on its merits.